In 2007, the 65-year-old Gambino captain Dominic Skinidon Pisonia was in court about to receive a 15-year sentence. To look at the thin, grey-haired, bespectacled, church-going granddad, you would never assume that he had been involved in three high-profile gangland murders, including that of Gambino family boss Paul Castellano and Thomas and Rosemary Uva, the modern-day Bonnie and Clyde who'd been robbing mob social clubs. Let's check him out. Welcome to OC Shorts, bringing you detailed historical snapshots of the American Mafia and other organised crime. Feel free to subscribe if you like that sort of thing. Today we're going to take a quick look at former John Gotti crew member and Gambino captain Dominic Skinny Dom Pizzonia. Born in Ozone Park, Queens, Dominic Pizzonia was a member of Gambino captain John Gotti's crew operating out of the Bergen Hunt and Fish Club. He had no further than a fifth grade education and is known to be illiterate. So much so that in 2005, a private detective was hired to read him court papers. Whilst in Gotti's crew, Skinny Dom gained himself a reputation as one of the best chefs in mob social club circles. He was known to be the primary chef at the Bergen Hunt and Fish Club's famous Saturday night pasta and sausage dinners. On December the 16th, 1985, Gambino family boss Paul Castellano and his underboss Tommy Bellotti were gunned down outside Sparks Steakhouse. The main shooters that day are believed to be John Carniglia, Sal Scala, Vinny Artuso and Eddie Lino, although Artuso's gun jammed. And in the crew of backup shooters ready to take action was Dominic Skinny Don Pizzonia stationed on 2nd Avenue. In Sammy the Bull Gravano's initial testimony, he left out Skinny Dom as part of the hit squad, apparently confusing him with Iggy Elonia. But further information has since come forward, confirming Pizzonia's presence at the legendary mob hit. John Gotti would call on Skinny Dom again three years later to deliver mob justice to a man who had beaten the wife of Gambino captain Fat Andy Ruggiano. Anthony Fat Andy Ruggiano was a well-liked mobster whose career dated back to the days of Albert Anastasia. According to his son, he was sponsored into the family by Charlie Wagons Fatico, the same man who would go on to be John Gotti's early mentor. Fat Andy worked his way up to the position of captain and in later years operated largely in Florida. In 1988, Ruggiano was serving time for racketeering. His son-in-law, low-level criminal Francesco Boccia, and his wife, Fatandi's daughter, were living with Ruggiano's wife. Boccia was allegedly a blood relative of Ferdinand the Shadow Boccia, a mobster famously murdered on the orders of Vito Genovese in 1934. It was this killing that led to Genovese fleeing to Italy in 1937 after authorities started closing in. Anyway, while staying with his mother-in-law, Fatandi's wife, Boccia verbally and physically abused her, allegedly because she refused to contribute towards the baptism of his daughter. Some reports say that he threw Vigiano's wife down a flight of stairs, whereas others say that he punched her, and some say it was a shoving match. Either way, Frank Boccia's days were numbered. And despite the fact that family boss John Gotti was rumoured to be not the biggest fan of Fat Andy, he sanctioned a hit on his son-in-law. Dominic Pizzonia lured Boccia to Rigiano's Cafe Liberty Social Club under the pretense of discussing a get-rich-quick scheme. At the club, Skinny Dom grabbed a revolver and then shot Boccia repeatedly in the head. He then paused, reloaded and said, This guy don't want to fucking die. And then shot the victim a few more times. This is all according to Fat Andy's son, Anthony Ruggiano Jr., who would turn informer sometime later. Ruggiano Jr. testified that those involved in the killing, apart from Skinny Dom, were himself, Alfred Di Codniglio, and Anthony Tony Lee Guerreri. Frank Botch's body was then taken out onto a boat. It was gutted from the stomach to the lungs to ensure that it would sink, and then thrown into the Atlantic Ocean. Unsurprisingly, his body has never been recovered. Fat Andy died years later, in 1999, at the age of 72. Pisonia was attending Reggiano's wake when allegedly Boccia's wife, Fat Andy's daughter, came up to him and accused him of killing her husband. 
Skinny Dom apparently responded, Shut up or it might happen to you. Later that year, Skinny Dom Pizzonia was rewarded for the botcher killing by being inducted into the Gambino crime family. On Christmas Eve 1988, Pizzonia, along with Bobby Borriello, Michael Mikey Scars Di Leonardo and John A. Junior Gotti all became made men in a ceremony conducted by Sammy Gravano and Pasquale Conte. With Fat Andy locked up for racketeering, Pizzonia essentially took over the running of the Café Liberty Social Club, making it the base of his operations. And it was this social club, along with several other mob hangouts, including the Hawaiian Moonlighters and the Veteran Friends Social Club, that were robbed by Thomas and Rosemary Uva in 1992. The full story of the modern day Bonnie and Clyde deserves a video to itself, and it was the inspiration for the films Rob the Mob and The Wannabe. As for Skinny Dom, he may well have taken the brazen robberies more personally than some others. Thomas and Rosemary Uva had robbed the Café Liberty Social Club not just once, but twice. Former Gambino captain turned informer Michael Mikey Scars Di Leonardo would later testify that Pisonia had sought and gained approval to murder the Uvers from acting boss John Gotti Jr. Pisonia had spoken to Di Leonardo and John Gotti Jr. outside the Café Liberty Social Club. Di Leonardo recalls, He told John he was going after them. He said he was going to kill them. On Christmas Eve 1992, Thomas and Rosemary Uva were in a maroon Mercury Topaz which had slowed to a halt at some traffic lights in Ozone Park, Queens. Two men approached the car, believed to be Dominic Pizzonia and Ronald Truccio. They opened fire on the married couple, shooting them three times in the head each. Interestingly, after the Ubers were murdered, Bonanno family boss Joe Messino and his underboss Sal Vitale met with John Gotti Jr. and the identity of the shooters was discussed. Sal Vitale would later testify that Jr. said to Big Joey, It was Ask Any Dom that did the job. It was our trophy. The point was made to clear up a rumour that Bonanno members Vincent Vinnie Gorgeous Basciano and Anthony Donato had carried out the hit. Messino was allegedly furious that he'd been lied to by his own men. It is thought that Donato took credit for the killing and said that Basciano did it with him. He then told this to Bonanno captain Patrick Di Filippo, who then in turn told Joe Messino. It is unclear as to why Massino never called for Donato's head. After Peter Gotti's ascension to the position of boss of the Gambino family in around 1999, Pisonia was elevated to the position of captain. And that same year, he officially inherited the Café Liberty Social Club after Fat Andy had passed away. In 2005, the federal government went after Dominic Pisonia for three murders, that of Frank Botcher and Thomas and Rosemary Uva. They felt confident with their case as they had witnesses such as mob turncoats Michael Mikey Scars Di Leonardo and Anthony Vigiano Jr. to testify against Skinny Dom. Pisonia's defence painted the accused as a faithful churchgoer with six grandchildren who hosted lavish family dinners at the holidays. Judge Jack Weinstein said, If the defendant's life were to be portrayed by a TV show or movie, it would require a split screen. One screen would show a courtly, well-dressed, polite and soft-spoken gentleman who is a fine neighbour, devoted to his family and generous to his friends. On the other side of the screen would simply be shown a hardened criminal, a lifelong member of a vicious gang of bookies, loan sharks, extortionists and cold-blooded killers. Amazingly, in the Botcher case, the jury said they couldn't convict Skinny Dom of the murder because there was no body. But Pisonia was handed a 15 year sentence for racketeering and for conspiracy in the killing of the Uvers. Although luckily for Dom, he wasn't convicted of being one of the shooters. His sentence started in 2007 and he was released on November the 15th, 2019 at the age of 78. I hope you found that interesting. Thanks for watching.